Welcome to My on Mondays, an explorative approach to the possessive my through narratives, art, and sound. Each Monday brings a new creation and unique perspective. My on Mondays is brought to you by Ming Studios, a contemporary art space and international artist residency program dedicated to the exhibition, experience, and exploration of arts and culture. Along with exhibiting artists from around the world, Ming also serves the community by hosting innovative programs including performances, workshops, screenings, readings, artist talks, and other cultural activities. For more information or if you'd like to participate in Mayan Mondays, you can visit our website at mingstudios.org. Hello and welcome to Mayan Mondays. Thank you for joining us this fine February day. Today we have a piece for our public poetry project by Christy Claymore, a frequent contributor to Mayan Mondays. Christy's a writer, researcher, freelance editor, and part-time English professor. She's an emerging poet whose work has been included in the previous five anthologies published by The Cabin, as well as in The Panorama Project, a pandemic arts segment underwritten by the Idaho Press Tribune and Sorrell's Place. Christy lives in Boise, Idaho, where she loves supporting the arts, running in the foothills, and raising her two boys. For today's episode, she reads us an excerpt from Walt Whitman's Song of Myself. A couple excerpts from Walt Whitman's Song of Myself. I celebrate myself and sing myself and what I assume you shall assume for every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. I loaf and invite my soul I lean and loaf at my ease, observing a spear of summer grass. My tongue, every atom of my blood, formed from the soil, this air, born here of parents, born here from parents the same, and their parents the same. I, now thirty-seven years old, in perfect health, begin, hoping to cease, not till death. Creeds and schools in abeyance Retiring back a while, sufficed at what they are, but never forgotten. I harbor, for good or bad. I permit to speak at every hazard, nature without check, with original energy. A child said, what is the grass? Fetching it to me with full hands. How could I answer the child? I do not know what it is any more than he. I guess it must be the flag of my disposition out of hopeful green stuff woven. Or I guess it is the handkerchief of the Lord, a scented gift and remembrancer, designedly dropped, bearing the owner's name some way in the corners, that we may see and remark and say, whose? Or I guess the grass itself a child, the produced babe of the vegetation. Or I guess it is a uniform hieroglyphic and means sprouting, alike in broad zones and narrow zones growing among black folks as among white. Canuck, Tuckahoe, Congressman, Cuff. I give them the same. I receive them the same. And now it seems to me the beautiful uncut hair of graves. Tenderly, I use you curling grass. It may be you transpire from the breasts of young men. It may be if I had known them, I would have loved them. It may be you are from old people, from offspring, taken soon from their mother's laps. And here you are, the mother's laps. This grass is very dark to be from the white heads of old mothers, darker than the colorless beards of old men, dark to come from under the faint red roofs of mouths. Oh, I perceive after so many uttering tongues, and I perceive they do not come from the roofs of mouths for nothing. I wish I could translate the hints about the dead young men and women, the hints about old men and mothers, and the offspring taken soon out of their laps. What do you think has become of the young and old men? What do you think has become of the women and children? They are alive and well somewhere. The small sprout shows there is really no death, and if ever there was, it led forward life does not wait at the end to arrest it. 
and ceased the moment life appeared. Thank you for joining us today. We'll be back next Monday. Tune in.